My name is Jeremy Raya. I grew up in Queens, New York. I am a first soloist with the Grand Ballet Canadian, and it's my 20th season. 20 years of Le Grand have been, first of all, incredible um, in so many ways. There's been ups, there's been downs, there's been, I mean, it's been life. It's been a relationship, I think, a 20-year relationship. My favorite choreographers that I've gotten to work with, it's, it's a huge list. Uh, I mean, so many, uh, like Yuri Killian or Matsak or Ohad Naharin, uh, I mean, masters uh, in the world of dance. Top three, Lenos, Bella Figura, and Romeo and Juliet. My all-time, all-time favorite piece, um, I think is one of the masterpieces created on Le Grand, Le Nos by Stain Sellis. I remember the first performance, I was in tears after, after that performance because I was so moved, you know, to have 24 of us, 12 women, 12 men, and making this little world, um, feeling part of a, a community, and you were really, you knew it was a good piece of art that was going to change the company. The most exhilarating moment for me um, as a dancer on stage was my first performance of uh, Romeo in Jean-Christophe Maillot's Romeo and Juliet. I can still remember it. Just that journey on stage and the journey to getting on stage. And it, it was probably one of the most draining times in my career. But to get to the stage of that first performance and, and just become that character, I'll never forget it. I've been here for 20 years and I arrived at 23 and of course you see a difference in your body. Um, I see a difference in my emotions as well, in my thought process. Everything changes. There's a joke in the dance world that the first thing to go is the arabesque. I tell you, it's true. But you learn to let go of that. I love to work on technique and I was a turner and I was a jumper, very quick. But I also wanted to develop myself as in the theatrical sense, in an emotional sense. I realized that that can bring more. The advice I would give to any dancer who would like to dance for a long time is first of all to train, to take care of your body. This is obvious, I think. Listen to your body. Know when to stop, know when to push. When you're not training and, and being in your craft, to take advantage of life, to travel, to watch movies, to read, have conversations with people you don't know, like live something because you need to bring that into your art. I think the best artists are the ones that experience things outside of their art. Otherwise, we're just bodies moving. Give advice to my younger self. Pay attention less to the people who don't see what you have to offer. When I was younger, and I think that that's the same for a lot of dancers, you want everyone to like you. Opinion. It's an opinion-based career. Focus less on that and more on the ones that do believe you have something to say. And not everything you do, you're gonna love. That, that becomes a challenge in, its, in itself. And then you have to, as I got older, I realized that you can find something wonderful in everything that comes along. There have been moments where physically you're exhausted or emotionally you're just drained. It happens quite often where you're just like, I wanna give up. I'm done, I'm tired. Those are the moments that, you know, you take a breath and you continue and you wind up on the next level somehow because I think everything has to be broken down in order to, to move forward. <laughs>